Hey, it's Chris, Luger Games. Today, Token Terrors Battlegrounds. So what do you need to know about this game? We're going to do something different with this review, and we're going to see how it goes. We're going to be doing a two-turn example of how to play on the game-to-game -game situation so that you get a sense of, one, what it looks like, two, the nuances of it, but three, at the same time, I'm going to tell you strengths, weaknesses, pros, cons, things you'll like, things you won't like, all in a nutshell, so you can actually see how it sort of unfolds while I show you at the same time all of those other things. Your time is valuable, condensing it down so you get what you need out of this all in one. Let's do this. So here's your basic setup of token terrors in terms of what the beginning of the game is gonna look like. You each have two factions per side that you're gonna mix and match a total of 10 different pieces. And so usually what they recommend when you're starting out is five, five, six, four, something along those lines of a split ranged melee combination. Now, obviously I just kind of chose here. So ranged melee, range, range. So take that for what you will. This shows you four of the possible seven different factions that come with the base game and so on one side it says the faction it says what they are what they are what their affiliations are all that fun stuff the other side and this is the meat of the game right here are the special abilities that make these factions asymmetric so the talents that go along with them here so the two talents as one of the actions you're taking on your turn you can utilize these most of the time they are taking an action to do them but some of these also have passive effects instead as their talents so for example, this one, in fact, it's a passive effect where it says it can battle friendly tokens. That's always in effect. So this one here, Incite as well. The next time this goblin battles, it gets plus one threat for each surrounding enemy. So that's just going to happen. You don't have to take an action. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing these out onto your little, and I do mean little grid here to begin with. And so you're taking a combination of however many you want and placing them around the outside. And this is where the tricky part of the game starts to actually unfold, is because in this game, unlike other games that are two-player dueling asymmetric games, if you will, the formations of your individual pieces start to really matter because the proximity, the threat, quote unquote, that is the main attack, but also the main defense is affected by how many similar units are around it. So you may not want to have them like this. You may want to have a formation like that. You may want to have a formation like that because threat, which is how much they attack for, but is also their health is figured out by the number of other of the same type of faction that they have adjacent to them in order orthogonal direction. So the threat right now for this is three. One at baseline, two, three. This one is only two. So you can start to see how combinations and configurations are really going to matter, especially when you have a melee situation. Well, what else are you doing? Well, you have your basic little setup card here. You have your move to an adjacent space, attack an enemy token, enrage, basically power up, if you will, get a plus one threat additionally to whatever it is, and then the talents that were aforementioned. Compare threat. If you can, actually, you can attempt to evade, which depending on the range and depending on the location and depending on how many actions you want to use for the attack action, the battle action, you may be able to evade it. You may not. And this is sort of the part that people may like or they may not like. If you use one potential battle, you have a better chance of rolling the die and evading the attack. But if you use two of your actions to battle, you may have to only get a six to evade. So even then, it becomes a lot harder. So how many of those actions do you allocate of the three actions you're getting on a single turn? Other ways and other things that are important in this game, as it says at the bottom here, earning surge points. Dash, move three times. So use all three of your actions to move. And what are surge points? Surge points are basically kept track of on the dice here in order to basically have extra actions on additional turns that you can utilize at the correct and most opportune time to take out your opponent's bad guys. The last thing is you can rest. You basically just turn your guy all the way around. You says, I'm turning my back to you and I'm gonna power myself up because do, 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 do. I don't really care what you're going to do this turn. Now, the other aspect that I didn't mention and the other difference than a lot of other games that have multiple skirmish figures on a battle is that you are choosing one thing to activate every single time. It's not like I can move this one and then move one here and then move one here and count that as dash, right? No, I have to take one of these and utilize all of the actions on one particular character. 
that is where the formation stuff really starts to become heavy. And that's where this game actually becomes surprisingly a lot more strategic rather than just a purely tactical war for a base situation. Now, what else do we have going for us? Well, we have secret envelopes, and who doesn't love secret envelopes here? And the symbols on here correspond to some of the factions that you'll see there. And that's because when you complete a certain objective that is named out in the rule book here, they give you a bunch at the back that you can sort of keep track of in this sense. Uh, reveal this tactic if you win two games with at least one soldier and one elf. And so it's going to be giving you additional tactical maneuvers that you can utilize on top of these to go along with the base game. And you can see there are a lot. There are 10 that come with it. Now, obviously, you could just take them all out and use that as an additional component of the game. But really what it's meant to do is to get you comfortable with these factions and their abilities, their symmetry, their synergy before you throw in an additional layer, because let me be clear about this. This is very small in production. This is very small on the table. It is not small in terms of thinking. It is much more of a puzzle chess-like game than it is a regular skirmish tactical driven game. And that's what makes it a lot different than what I was even initially expecting when I first played it. Let's go to my final thoughts. So what are my final thoughts on this, right? It's mixed. It's mixed. Because as you saw, there is a lot of strategy that goes into this. At first, I thought it was going to be very similar to other two-player asymmetric faction type games. The benefit is that it's really not. It really is unique in standalone because of the use of proximity thematically incorporated with the different factions to give the abilities their yin and yang. It really does, you know, and I, I don't say this about a lot of things, but it makes you feel like they are significantly different. The soldiers, the phalanx of, of troops that they march as, as you have one ability that allows you to move the other two along with it to keep them in that tight formation to get the bonus to the threat to make them a harder target. The flying maneuverability of the starting, the ending, the switching of some of those airborne units. And I thought this was going to be a tactics fest. There is a lot more strategy in this game. Because, because when I look at a two-player game, right? In a game like this, there's always on this side of the scale, strategy. On this side of the scale, tactics, right? And I was expecting this, this to be, you know, tactical heavy. And I would argue that there is a lot more strategy. Now, it's it's not, you know, clearly like strategy way higher, but it's more strategic heavy than I was expecting. So if you're looking for something like that, as opposed to Exceed or something like Mythic Battles, where, yes, the spatial element uh, matters, but it is more the tactical use of that rather than a purely strategic function of some of the units more or less depending on you know what you choose this has a lot more of that so if you're looking for something like that this may be more up your ilk than some of the more well-known names in the two-player battlers and that's probably the biggest surprise as how strategically uh influential this game was in terms of needs at the same time i found that that level of strategy is not what I necessarily want out of a game. So for me, I have found that overall, I feel like tactical nature is more up my alley. So that's why I have mixed feelings on it, right? I recognize the design elements. I recognize the differences and the nuances to set it apart from your other two-player mashup factions and fight games. But... I ultimately know what fits well with me, and that's why I'm not sure it's going to stay in my collection. I mean, it's a, it's a really good game. Don't get me wrong about this. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to be very, very happy with this game, even with just like the core eight factions. But it's also going to be too thinky from a strategy side of things if you're looking for something that's going to be lighter and flowing more easily. If you're looking for a fast playing, quick action, back and forth style smash dueling game, you can do that with this. 
but it's not going to be probably as engaging for you because the strength of this game is really more chess-like in appearance, but also tactical in appearance, but also in how it actually plays. And that is going to lend it to be, for those that are really going to put some effort into it, a longer game, more of a back and forth, slow progression, as opposed to what you may want out of it elsewise, if that is not where you want to muster 45 minutes to even an hour for a game like this. Now, I'm not going to tell you it takes this. You can play a game of this uh, smash and grab back and forth in 15 minutes as well. But if you do, as we did, you're not going to get the full nuance of the game either with the strategy that goes in with these. And the mixing and the matching and the min and the maxing and the combinations and the pluses and the minuses of factions and balancing that goes into some of the extra objectives. And you just have to know that. But this is a small box, a small game, but don't be fooled by its size. So like I said, where is it going to end up? I don't know. I don't know because it's a little bit too thinky for my wife. And that's the trouble I've run into even with the other games that I love. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, copies of Exceed over there and over here next to me, right? Like, I love Exceed, and I'm not sure <laughs> I have too much to get played frequently, right? Like, Android Netrunner. It's not my wife's game, right? Things like that are more akin to this in terms of the level of thought that's going to go into it, whether it's more tactical or more strategic. And we really thrive here in my house on the more tactical side of things. So for me personally, that's why. But if you aren't like me in that sense, this might be a really good fit for you from that aspect. There you go. Token Terrors, Battlegrounds. They sent me the copy so that I could talk to you guys about it as it's getting released in the near future. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking. Stay classy. Have a great day.